Good evening. You're watching this Mongolian Bureau. I'm your host, Anna Abatr. And for top stories, Mongolians participated in the 81 International Global Village Festival 2022 held in South Korea. Ego BNGO received the most impactful initiative award at the 2022 Women in Tech APEC Awards. People with disabilities have many disadvantages with integration into society. And for the news, stay tuned. Mongolians wearing their national costumes participated in the International Art and Culture Festival held in Korea. A festival has been held in Yunsan district of Korea, in which the embassies of 26 countries participated. More than 1,000 artists from the various countries participated in the festival and promoted the history, culture and heritage of their nation. More than 1 million people came to see the festival. An international festival is taking place in Eitaewon, South Korea. In this festival, our Mongolians are participating while wearing their national clothes and ornaments. People from Eitaewon district and Yunsan district are jointly organized this event. In this pavilion, you can try on national clothes and eat local food. And it continues for two days. During the festival, there was an art performance where people of the various countries wearing their national clothes took part in a parade. More than 50 young people dressed in national costumes and participated in the holiday parade, including representatives of the embassy, Mongolian school teachers and students, youth association, and representatives of citizens living and studying in Korea. <laughs> I brought my national clothes from my country. I'm very happy to participate in this international rally after traveling almost 3,000 kilometers. Korean citizens are very interested in Mongolian products. Today, more than 300 people came to see the items we can offer. I came here at 7 a.m. in the morning, and since then people have been watching and taking pictures together. Seeing the clothes I wear, guests immediately recognize me as representing Chinggis Han and the Mongolian people. I am very excited. <laughs> Ego BNGO is a non-profit educational initiative delivering STEM programs to rural children and young adults to improve their computer and information technology skills. It runs a robotics-based STEM learning center, and more than 500 rural students have participated in its STEM programs since its establishment. This is Irtan Sovt, a native of Umungov province. After working for more than a decade in public broadcasting and completing her graduate studies in Shanghai and London, she decided to change her career and work in education, contributing to the development of rural youth. She co-founded the NGO Tchemkov, or eGobi, and is now the CEO. She has operated the non-profit organization since 2018 to improve the information technology education of children and youth in Dalinzatatsum, Umungov province. We enroll children three years old and up in eight different coding and robotics classes our NGO offers. Last year, province authorities provided housing for our center. Unfortunately, they later informed us that it would be impossible to continue that support due to unforeseen circumstances. Young boys and girls enrolled in our classes learn to code and create simple robotics projects. Our NGO's mission is to create world-class engineers from the Gobi region. Since its foundation, the organization has enrolled more than 500 local students in eight levels of robotics-based STEM programs. To increase girls' engagement in technology, eGobi conducted training for girls at local boarding schools with funding from the United Nations Children's Fund. 30% of all eGobi program students are girls. Irtensoft says that technology classes require funding and support to provide children with the necessary materials and tools. E Gobi invites companies to cooperate with the NGO as part of their corporate social responsibility activities. Recently, eGobi received the most impactful initiative award from the 2022 Women in Tech Asia Pacific Awards for helping rural girls study coding with robots. 
Women in Tech is an international nonprofit organization on a mission to close the gender gap and help women embrace technology. Last summer, the One Heart Humanitarian campaign was implemented in 21 provinces. Now the initiator is going to continue this campaign in the nine districts of the Olambat city. His purpose is to sincerely help people who have the same problems and issues as he has. He is appealing you to express yourself by entering into social relationships, not isolate yourself from society, even if you suffer from a disability. According to a study, more than 70% of people over 15 years of age with disabilities in our country are not employed. Citizens say that the main reason for this is the lack of suitable jobs for them and problems such as self-isolation from society. However, Murundilir continues to set an example of the importance of overcoming oneself and entering into social relations even when faced with many difficulties. When I'm going to all 21 provinces, I have the ambition to be the voice of disabled people and listen to their voices. If a student's wheelchair is broken when they go to school, I would like to help them. I have been successfully active for 46 days in society. People with disabilities need to have a common goal, express their position in society, and go shopping and experience cultural activities on their own. Your participation is most important in creating an equal society where everything is available to everyone. But one of the problems faced by people with disabilities is a lack of infrastructure. According to a survey of enterprises operating in capital, about 80% do have not access ramps, service halls, and information boards for people with disabilities. However, it is important to solve problems for people with disabilities. Bainzurk district has more than 9,000 disabled citizens. There are also more than 1,000 disabled children. When the organization hires people, the problem is that the other person cannot get in or out due to a lack of accessibility. Regarding the second problem, disabled people usually have a care group. And because of the fear of being excluded from the care group, I generally have a choice between working or receiving care. They say that they may be cut off from welfare if they work and pay social security. They tell us about problems like this. In general, it is important to solve such issues in the future. On the one hand, it is important to support citizens with disabilities to enter into social activities. On the other hand, representatives of disabled people urge them to be strong-hearted and work as much as they can fulfill their own dreams. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Here's the international news from our partner agencies. Australia has reversed the previous government's recognition of West Jerusalem as Israel's capital, the foreign minister said Tuesday, prompting consternation from Israel. The centre-left Labour Party government agreed to again recognise Tel Aviv as the capital. The cabinet also reaffirmed that Jerusalem's status must be resolved in peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians, Foreign Minister Penny Wong said. Australia remained committed to a two-party solution to the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. Israel's Prime Minister Yair Lapid expressed disappointment in Australia's changed position. He said in a statement that Jerusalem is the eternal, undivided capital of Israel. Israel's Foreign Ministry said it will summon the Australian ambassador over the issue. Well, as an Israeli, Jewish, and a Tel Avivian, liberal Tel Avivian, uh, I would not want to live in Jerusalem in any way, but Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people. It's not only belong to the Jewish people, it's belong to all religious. And I think it's pretty really, like, like ridiculous that other governments like involve, trying to involve in our internal, you know, um, politics, I think it's really not their business. Senior Palestinian official Hussein Al-Sheikh said he welcomes Australia's recent decision, 
Former Conservative Prime Minister Scott Morrison formally recognized West Jerusalem as Israel's capital in December 2018, although the Australian embassy remained in Tel Aviv. In the 1967 Mideast War, Israel captured East Jerusalem, home to holy sites of three faiths, along with the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The Palestinians seek East Jerusalem as the capital of a future state. The status of Jerusalem remains one of the thorniest issues in the decades-long conflict and has precipitated numerous rounds of violence. Only a handful of countries, including Kosovo and Guatemala, have joined the U.S. in recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Australian and Singaporean leaders announced on Tuesday what they described as a world first agreement to cooperate in transitioning their economies to net zero greenhouse gas emissions. Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong and Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese outlined their so-called Green Economy Agreement between the two countries after an annual meeting in the Australian Parliament House. Today we open a new chapter in the comprehensive strategic partnership between Australia and Singapore. The Green Economy Agreement signals collective resolve to confront challenges as we transition our economies to net zero. It will support clean energy innovation, unlock business opportunities and create jobs, and help deliver our emissions targets while positioning Australia as a renewable energy superpower. Singapore-Australia Green Economy Agreement, which will support the transitions of our countries to net zero emissions and at the same time boost growth and job, create jobs in the green sectors. It's the first such agreement of its kind between countries and we hope that it will be a pathfinder for other countries similarly to cooperate with one another to deal with what is a global problem. It's a dreadful situation. The agreement has 17 components that cover facilitating trade and investment in green services, harmonizing standards and building green growth sectors through collaboration between business. Australia is committed to reducing its emissions to net zero by 2050, and Singapore is considering adopting the same target. The Japanese government announced an expansion of sanctions on North Korea, freezing the assets of five organizations it said were involved in nuclear and missile development. The measures were approved by Japan's cabinet on Tuesday. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno told reporters in Tokyo. He said the decision had been taken as further measure against North Korea for the purpose of comprehensively resolving outstanding issues such as abductions, nuclear weapons and missiles. In recent weeks, North Korea has launched a series of missiles, including a ballistic missile that flew over Japan. At today's cabinet meeting, as a further measure against North Korea for the purpose of comprehensively resolving outstanding issues such as abductions, nuclear weapons and missiles, it was agreed to additionally designate five organizations involved in nuclear and missile development, which are prohibited by Security Council resolution related to North Korea, as subjects to asset freezes and such based on the Foreign Exchange Act. A series of provocative actions by North Korea, which continues with extremely high frequency, including the launch of a ballistic missile that flew over Japan on the 4th of this month, poses a serious and imminent threat to Japan's security. It is an outrageous act that threatens the peace and security of the region and the entire international community and is absolutely unacceptable. Japan strongly urges North Korea to take concrete actions to resolve issues of concern, such as the abductions, nuclear weapons and missiles. In addition, we will aim for the denuclearization of North Korea through close cooperation between Japan and the United States, as well as between Japan and the United States and South Korea while cooperating with the international community. Matsuna said the launches posed a serious and imminent threat to Japan's security. Matsuna urged North Korea to take concrete actions to address Japan's concerns. Now let's take a look at our regular future on sports. The Golden State Warriors are eyeing a second consecutive NBA title and the franchise fifth since 2015 as this season tips off on Tuesday, bidding to cement its ever-defining legacy with yet more success. The reigning champions faced LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers in their opening game at Chase Center in San Francisco, 
and will look to leave behind a fractious preseason in which tempers flared up within the team. Footage was shared of forward Draymond Green punching teammate Jordan Poole during a practice session earlier this month, an incident that the veteran has since apologized for. Green, who has enjoyed a trophy late in eight years with the Warriors, was fined but not suspended after the altercation with head coach Steve Kerr, calling it the biggest crisis that we have had since I've been the coach here. Despite the incident, Paul lead scoring for the Dubs with 25 points in their 124-121 preseason loss to the Lakers, the first game since the run-in. The 23-year-old point guard also recently signed a new four-year deal with the franchise worth up to 140 million US dollars. The Warriors will hope the new generation of talent will keep landing with the old guard, including Green and superstar Steph Curry, to form a formidable force this season. The Warriors will face a tough test from the Lakers in the opening game, with LeBron James on a mission to break the league's all-time scoring record. James is currently 1,326 points away from passing Karim Abdul-Jabbar's mark set in 1989, but the 37-year-old is forecasted to overtake the legendary center's tally in the 49th game of the season, based on him averaging around 27 points per game. James impressed last season averaging 30.3 points per game, but he and the team failed to make the playoffs. Lakers coach Darvin Ham says the team is hungry to redeem itself after the last year's disappointment. Elsewhere, the Phoenix Suns, LA Clippers, Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics are all teams fancied to be in the running for Larry O'Brien Trophy, but if one thinks for certain, the NBA is anything but predictable. Brazil and Paris Saint-Germain forward Neymar Jr. told a Barcelona court on Tuesday that he wasn't involved in negotiations that sent him from Santos to FC Barcelona in 2013, according to Reuters. The 30-year-old, alongside his parents, former Barcelona president Josep Maria Bartomeu and Sandro Rossell, representatives of both clubs and Odilo Rodriguez, Santos president are facing fraud and corruption charges over the transfer. All nine defendants have repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, according to Reuters. Neymar's father, Neymar de Silva Santos, testified, our intentions was to prepare a career plan for him in Europe, in which we had in place already established, could learn the language, etc. And knowing his dream to play for Barcelona, we signed that priority agreement with them. I had options to move to many different clubs. They wanted me to play for them, but my dream had always been to play for the Barca. I wanted to play there since I was a kid, because of the players they had and because of the entity of the club. I always follow my heart and my heart kept saying Barca. The case was brought on by Brazilian investment firm DIS, owners of 40% of Neymar's rights, while he was at Santos, who alleged that his transfer to Barcelona was undervalued. Spanish prosecutors are pursuing a two-year prison term and a 9.8 million US dollar fine for Neymar, as well as a five-year jail term for Rossell. Here's the weather forecast of all major cities. Well, that's all for today and thank you for staying with us. We will see you tomorrow with Munis and Update. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.